Tonight, on the wonderful world of Disney, Go West, Young Dog. Seems like there's been more yarn spun about the good guys and the bad guys of the Old West than there ever was people to remember them. So here's one maybe you haven't heard before. Charlie Meacham was lucky. One fine spring day, his pick struck pay dirt out Calico Way. 1880 it was, California, and rich and all get out with silver. Just tons and tons of silver. Well, quick as a cat, the word spread around. And a boom town grew on that hard, rocky ground. Yes, sir, that was Calico. And a real rip snorter she was, too. Prospectors, gamblers, and claim jumpers came, all seeking their share of money and fame. They'd take it any way they could get it, too. Before long, they're swarming all over that hill. Diamond Kate, Big Swede, even Diabolical Bill. Well, when the mines played out, they drifted away, and only one memory lives to this day. It's not only true, it's a heck of a tale about Dorsey, the dog who delivered the mail. Now, Dorsey's story started a long way from Calico, on one of those spindly stretches of railroad that spanned the great American desert in the mail car. You see, the mail was sort of a way of life with Dorsey. He had been born and raised in a post office in Wichita. So when he'd grown up and started making his way west, he'd just naturally drifted into a job with the Postal Service. It's kind of a mascot, guard dog, retriever. There you go, Dorsey. It was a good deal for the postal clerks, too. In fact, as far as they're concerned, Dorsey's just like one of the boys. It had been a comfortable and rewarding life for Dorsey until the day he met up with the McBrides. George and Ernie McBride, they were. Two of the Old West's least famous and least successful desperados. Hey, George, the train's coming. Here, take the horse. OK, Ernie, let's go over this one more time. I'll jump on the train here, grab the gold off the mail car. You take the horses and meet me at Rock Creek Crossing. You got it? OK, George. So now it was train robbery, and a mighty ambitious scheme it was, too. After all, they'd been trying for the last five years to make their first dishonest dollar. They hadn't done it yet. in the business. 
So naturally, he figured breaking in and taking the gold would be easier than falling off a log. Nice story. Let go. As a matter of fact, it turned out to be a whole lot like falling off a log. Okay, George. Well, no doubt about it, Dorsey had saved the gold shipment single-handed. But there sure wasn't anybody here to thank him for it. In fact, all he had now was another problem. The train's gone. It looked like he's gonna have to give up railroading and head west again. Seems like his instincts couldn't have been a whole heck of a lot worse. He wound up having to cross about 98 and a half percent of the Mojave Desert and it was hotter than a depot stove. Well, by afternoon of the second day, Dorsey's tongue was hanging out about a foot and 40 inches, but it turned out his instincts had been exactly right after all. This kindly gent was none other than the town of Calico's one and only postmaster, Everett Stacy. come from? Oh, you're thirsty, huh? Well, help yourself. If you needed an invite. Boy, you really were thirsty, huh? Can't say as I blame you in this heat. So it's Dorsey, huh? Everett didn't know it yet, but he and his mailbags had just come up for adoption. You know, I wasn't figuring on you as being permanent, but I guess you can tag along, at least till we find out where you belong. For the rest of the day, Dorsey followed Everett along his rounds through Odessa and Wall Street canyons, delivering the mail to the miners and prospectors. Let's see, Ebenezer, yeah, oops. Thank you, Dorsey. How'd you learn to do that? Oh, howdy, Everett. You bring me anything besides some bills? Nothing important. It's all a dress document. Well, thanks, Everett. Come on, Dorsey. We got ground to cover. By the time they finally made their way back down into Calico, Everett was really beginning to enjoy Dorsey's company. For Dorsey's part, Calico just seemed like a right friendly place. The best part, though, was yet to come. mail. Well, now, if this is where it lived, this is where Dorsey lived, too. About the only thing he couldn't do was perform a formal adoption ceremony. Next morning, as usual, Everett was up bright and early, heading out on his route. But today, for the first time, tagging along was his new pal, Dorsey, and loving every minute of it. Morning, Miles. Everett figured it was as good a time as any to start introducing him to the folks around town, like Big Swede, the blacksmith. I want you to meet my new helper. Name's Dorsey. Well, how to do there, Dorsey? <laughs> Ooh. 
He won't hurt you, Dorsey. Last stop in Calico proper, right at the edge of town, was Miss Hattie's. She was the new school marm. More dress patterns, Miss Hattie. All the way from Philadelphia. Thank you, Everett. Just beyond Miss Hattie's was the mouth of Mule Canyon and the first of the mines, the Waterloo. From there, the trail wound back and forth through those hills like a snake with the Epizuti. Past the Hyena House, the Occidental, the burning Moscow, and the Runover. Then a long hike through Odessa Canyon to the Oriental, the Bismarck, the Silver King, and the fabulous Big Thunder. Just beyond the Big Thunder, it was uphill into Wall Street Canyon. And that was where the neighborhood really went downhill at George and Ernie McBride's. Everett had always had trouble getting along with these two balloons. Well, Dorsey, neither rain, sleet, hail, or the McBride's can stop the U.S. mail. Sure wish something could, though. George, we got the same Yeah, thing. yeah, that's the same. But I forget where we seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forget, too. All right, you guys, cut it out before somebody gets hurt. You'd better keep that mud away from our place, you hear? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Dorsey, don't worry about it. Way up at the end of Wall Street Canyon was the last stop on the route. And Everett always looked forward to it because it was a good chance to rest and talk with an old friend. Hey, Ben! Hey, ben. What? What? You what? got company. Whoop! Whoop! Well, howdy, Everett. Howdy, Ben. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Come on out to the house. I made a little stew. Like many another single blanket prospector, old Ben had dug a lot of holes in his time and panned a lot of streams from Placerville to Virginia City and clear down into Tombstone. Now, all he had to show for it so far was a few tools and his burrow Maybell. When he'd heard about the big strike at Calico, he and Maybell had made the long trip here. But as usual, he had been digging in the wrong place. Everett introduced him to Dorsey and then made one more try to convince the old-timer to call it quits and move to town. Come to work for him at the post office. Well, I don't know, Everett. I've been chasing that old rainbow now for 46 years, and I just feel it in my bones that this is gonna be my big hit. And besides, Everett, what good would I be? Looks like you're gonna have Dorsey for company. What more help you gonna need? Well... The job will be open for you whenever you're ready. So that's the way it went through the months that followed. It was up in the morning, out on the trail with Everett delivering the U.S. mail. Well, by now it was really Everett and Dorsey, because the two of them were getting pretty near inseparable. The bond between them just kept growing stronger, but the route was getting longer and longer. Yes, sir, it was the height of the boom. Those miners is out there boring holes in the ground faster than a herd of gophers with a St. Titus dance. No matter how many of them there was, though, Dorsey knew every prospector well. In fact, he knew how to ring every bell or bark a greeting to his friends on the trail while he and Everett delivered the mail. Winter came and went in the Calicos, and in the spring of 81, the discovery of borax brought even more people flocking to the desert camp. Everett figured he might make a few extra saw bucks if he fixed up that old wagon of his, so he could pick up deliveries himself out at the railhead at Daggett. That turned out to be a little bit like standing downhill from a landslide. Sorry, Dorsey. Old Everett just won't be making the rounds today. Now, the way Everett Stacy told it, he just decided to send Dorsey out on the route by himself. 
But of course, nobody ever heard Dorsey's side of the story. So, it's anybody's guess whose idea it really was. Now, why didn't I think of that? Well, you could go on with that argument forever. But anyway, Everett fixed Dorsey up with a mail pouch and wrote a note explaining his accident and asking folks to sign it if they got their mail. Now, Dorsey, I'm counting on you to do your best. If this works out, it's going to be a powerful help to me. Remember, stay clear of the McBrides. That was the day the legend of Dorsey began. He traveled that route from the first to the last. He delivered the mail, delivered it fast. And now he knew every twist of the trail, every rock, every bush, every valley and vale. He traveled along with a tail wagon trot, and the folks all signed for the letters they got. He even remembered whatever it said. Stay clear of the McBrides, stay away from their spread. They didn't even see him. They were too busy with their spring house cleaning, which is something they did every year, whether they needed to or not. So he left them alone at the rickety shack and went on his way with the pack on his back. But ahead was real danger, all claws and sharp fangs, a big old cougar with intense hunger pangs. For Dorsey, of course, and no food either. It was lucky for him that back down that gorge was, well, you can guess who, Ernie and George. Everett's job now, huh? Good for you. There you go. Why don't you have a biscuit and then get on home, Dorsey? Go on. Go on. Get going. <laughs> It had been a great day for Dorsey, and of course Everett was mighty happy to see him home, especially when he opened the mail bag and read the signatures. Sure enough, Dorsey hadn't missed a customer, except the one he was supposed to. Everett, give me our mail. You ain't got any, George. Listen, that mud will taste buckshot in his hide if he ever shows up at our place again. <laughs> before Dorsey's mail run had turned into a regular routine. And it always started out the same way, getting the mail bag strapped on and getting the same special instructions. 
Now remember, Dorsey, don't go near the McBrides. No McBrides, you understand? McBrides, no, no, no. Word spread fast in a little town like Calico, and pretty soon most everybody had heard about Dorsey, the mail-carrying dog, and taken him into their hearts. As for Dorsey, feeling was mutual, except for that one special case. By now, Dorsey had become a familiar and welcome sight to the miners, too, from the shovel stiffs to the slag buggy operators. And as often as not, his daily arrival meant a welcome letter from home. Oh, there were dangers and pitfalls along the way, but like any good mailman, Dorsey was quick to learn that there were some critters you just stayed clear of. just slick as a whistle. But today, up at the end of the trail, old Ben was waiting with some news that was going to wind up causing quite a commotion in Calico. Looky here, Dorsey. I wouldn't tell nobody but you, but this just might be our lucky day. Come on. What Ben was so excited about was a real promising ore sample. First, of course, it had to be assayed. Then, if the report came back positive, and he was sure it would, He'd file a claim paper in San Berdu, and his 40 years of scratching in the dirt was finally going to pay off. Now, you take this to Everett, you hear? This might be the biggest day of our lives. Now, George and Ernie McBride had never exactly drowned themselves in their own sweat. But they finally had found a way to keep themselves occupied, even though you couldn't exactly call it work. George figured it this way. Since they had to go down to post office for their mail every day, they'd just sort of hang around and look for clues to some easy way to make a killing. Of course, George figured he was about as smart as a whole tree full of owls, so naturally he came up with a plan right away. And like all of George's plans, it was real simple. Simple-minded, that is. They'd just wait till the assay report got back and then find out what it said. Get down! Get up that hill, big fella. It's moving and moving fast. All right, whoa. Whoa! said to the wall. Well, we finally got old Ben's assay report, Everett. Hey, Ern. Why don't we go get our mail? Sure, George. Go! No. Pull that out.
There it is. Right over there, George. Ernie, shut up. Now give me that rope. I'm going down. Is. That's right. This never came out of that old hole he's been picking in. Supposing we just let the mutt deliver this. Then we can follow old Ben when he goes to stake his new plane. Sucker and even break. Dorsey never had learned to speak human, so he couldn't tell Everett about what had happened last night. As far as Everett was concerned, the next day was just business as usual. Now, you take this up to Miss Hattie. These here to Hannah Jones. And this goes to old Ben. And don't you go tearing along the way. Dorsey, bless your heart. When old Ben reads that report, he's bound to rush out to his new strike to stake his claim. Dorsey, come on, boy. Come on. Come on over here. Yesterday. Come on over here while I write out a claim paper for you to take. He already done it. That mutt carries the claim paper and it gets back to San Perdu. We're sunk. Come on. Here you are, Dorsey. Have some stew. I uh, know this is my lucky day. Uh, let's see now. Where's that pencil? Get 
get some string and bake it. Okay, George. Well, George had come up with another of his brilliant plans. All they had to do was trap Dorsey, steal the claim paper, and they'd find out where old Ben's strike was. It's gonna be easy as falling off a log. We'll file on it ourselves. All legal. And then old Ben will have an accident. George felt all warm inside. His criminal mind was really perking now. It's good to know he hadn't lost his touch. Again, George? Shut up. And leave everything to me, Ernie. We'll put it right here. Okay, George. If we can hurry up, we'll have one more chance. This time it's got to work. Get out of sight, quick. We'll get him this time, sure. Got there awful fast. Sure is strong for a little dog. He ain't so little. We gotta be careful we don't get bit. I'll grab him with my jacket, and then we'll... I think we got this time, George. There he goes. Come on, Ernie. If he gets to the post office, we're through.
it is. Let him go. It's the old Spanish mine. Ben must have broke into a new vein. Everybody knows where it is. But nobody's bothered to claim it. We can file our claim whenever we feel like it. Long as this never gets there. Get going, Mutt. got for Uncle Sam here. Never mind the paper, Dorsey. Let's just get the mail out. Look, Dorsey, I got no time to play fetch with you. My foot's painting me. I gotta clean up and get your mail on the way. Leave it be. And I thought I might hear from Ben. Oh, well, guess there wasn't anything to that essay after all, as usual. Early the next day, George and Ernie headed out on the long trail to San Berdu to file on old Ben's claim. But first, George, being the brains of the bunch, figured it'd be a good idea to check in at the post office as usual, so as not to arouse any suspicions. Any mail for us? Nothing today, George. That critter chained if I were you, mister. Yeah. Dorsey, I don't know what tarnation's got into you, but I don't like the look of it. You know, Ern, this is gonna be easier than falling off a log. It'll take a few days. As soon as we get back from filing our claim, we'll fix old Ben, and everything will be all set. Yeah, and in the meantime, old Ben's up there working our claim for us. Ever since his latest brush with the McBrides, Everett had kept Dorsey locked up. He just couldn't figure what had gotten into the dog. But with the mail piling up and his foot still painting him, he had no choice. He'd have to send Dorsey back out on the route. Of course, Dorsey didn't mind that a bit. All right, Dorsey, let's get ready. That ought to hold. All right, Dorsey, you're ready to go. But you better pay attention to business. No fooling around or fighting, or I'll just take you off the route. It sure felt good to be on the trail again, doing his duty, and Dorsey was especially looking forward to a visit with his old friend Ben. Maybe even having a bit of stew. 
but Ben wasn't anywhere in sight. A little ways off, though, Dorsey's keen nose picked up a familiar scent leading up a remote side canyon. It was sort of a combination of stew and chawing tobacco. Yeah, that's been all right. Take care of you. with a gash in your head from fighting, and for all I know, you... Send help, quick, then. Come on, Dorsey, we ain't got no time to waste. Sheriff? Looks like Ben's in trouble. We gotta get up to the mine right away. Deputy, give me a hand here. What kind of trouble is it? I don't know, but he's not the kind that yells for help unless he really needs it. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> Ben? Ben, where are you? <laughs> Something strange about this.
We found this old spook prowling around our new claim, sticking up notices of his own. So we're bringing him in for claim jumping. That's a lie, Sheriff. These two bums jumped my claim. They was fixing to kill me. I filed a claim notice a week ago and sent the papers in with Dorsey. He's loco. I filed yesterday in San Bredou and there's nothing on record. I tell you, I sent it in with Dorsey. All of a sudden, Everett remembered the day Dorsey had brought that watered up piece of paper in from somewhere and he'd thrown it away. And I thought he just wanted to play. Are you sure you ain't emptied that basket? In only a week? Of course not. Note from Miss Hattie. Uh, past due for beans, I paid that. Wait a minute. This looks like... No. The Chocolate notice. Bulletin from the post office. Uh, assessment plan. Uh-oh, wait a minute. This looks like it. Yes, sir, there she is. Tooth marks on a hold it right there, you two. That's her, all right. Full claim notice. Dated, signed, and legal description. It's a first claim, all right, and it's legal. Dorsey's tooth prints are just as good as if he'd signed for it. I'll witness when it came in here and from the time Ben first gave it to Dorsey. So that episode was over, but not the whole tale, because Dorsey went on delivering the mail. Fortune and riches finally came to old Ben. As for George and Ernie, they wound up in the pen. Never did make their first dishonest dollar, either. And Postmaster Stacy, he stuck with his job, wound up with a pension and a watch and a fob. But they're all forgotten now on that long-lost trail, except for Dorsey, the dog who delivered the mail. Thank <laughs> you.